When traveling, many of us prefer to keep our kits light to avoid heavy baggage while on the move and the already hefty fees that come with travel. If you spot fellow travelers who happen to be photographers, it's quite often that you see these enthusiasts with interchangeable lens cameras. And it makes sense, but I myself came across a problem. Notice I mentioned enthusiasts. So how about those who aren't so well versed in the camera world and you just want to simply snap a few photos and record some special moments to look back on? Well, this is where the Sony ZV-1 comes in. Back to the roots where many of us may have started, which is a point and shoot style camera. Okay, so why is that Brandon? Well, in my relationship, I am the photo and video enthusiast. I'll go out of my way to compose, select each setting on how I would like to create the image I desire. Her on the other hand, just wants to capture some moments for us to look back on. Without having to toy with too many settings and worry about which lens does what, she simply just wants to capture and live in the moment. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. In fact, I wish I could do the same instead of trying to make each photo, each video, aesthetic or cinematic. It definitely takes time. Don't worry though, she understands, for the most part. The ZV-1 is more than the vlogging camera that it's known for. Surprisingly enough, the auto settings both in photo and video, I believe, do a fantastic job. That makes it perfect for the both of us. If I want to toy with the settings, I can. But if she wants to use it, she could simply hit that mode button and explore the menu and pick what she would like. The auto settings do a pretty good job at whatever activity we'd find ourselves wanting to capture during travel. But let's dig a little deeper though. Let's talk about pros and cons. First pro is the autofocus. Let's face it, when traveling, you may need to stick to an itinerary and you don't really have much time to set up for a shot. I mean, you just point, shoot, and go on your way. I haven't had any focusing issues so far with the ZV-1 and despite releasing four years ago in 2020, the strides Sony has made over the years, I know I can trust the autofocus. Next is having a zoom. And I'm not talking about the digital zoom that you have on your phones. These are real glass elements we're talking about here. Meaning you'll still maintain a great image as you zoom, giving you more ways to compose your shots. Next is the size. This is the size of the ZV-1 compared to the FX30. Size and weight alone? I mean, there isn't really a valid reason not to pack this in your travel bag. Last, but certainly not least, is the variety of shooting modes Sony offers in the ZV-1. As mentioned before, being the enthusiast, I know what settings I need to do in order to capture, say, a landscape, action shot, or shooting in low light. On the other hand, my girlfriend doesn't really know how to properly expose for these various situations. And that is when the mode button makes itself a great tool for casual shooters. Of course, with pros, there has to be cons. So let's go over them. First is being battery life. Yes, the camera's small, meaning the batteries will be small too. Unfortunately, one of these batteries only gives us short of an hour of shooting time. So this is something that I had to be wary of, of knowing when to turn on the camera only when I needed it to. Even then, it just sucks seeing that you have a dead battery when half of the day hasn't gone by yet. Next, no built-in flash or EVF. Having flash for a burst of light at night or indoors or even having a better way to view your image in the harsh sunlight, these things can be helpful in a pinch. While one could argue that these features probably do fare better on a photo dedicated camera, 
I think it would have been nice to at least have one of these added to the ZV-1, and perhaps this could have been the modern point and shoot we've all dreamt of. Anyway, last con here is the lens width. As this camera was marketed for vlogging, though it does well at that, hand holding this while vlogging without a tripod, not very ideal. The angle is pretty tight and adding stabilization on top of that mix makes it even tighter. Thus, it is not as friendly to those who wish to include more than just themselves in their vlogs. So yeah, holding this out like this, it, it's not enough. But to combat this, I actually found myself some tripods that I believe pair very well with the ZV-1. First is the vlogger classic, the Gorillapod. You've probably seen this thing everywhere. It's impossible if you've never looked at vlogging videos. And the next one is an extendable cell phone tripod from Ulanzi. This one's pretty new and the ZV-1 is lightweight enough to keep it extended and have it stand up with its legs apart. One of my personal favorites actually. Both have their uses, the Gorillapod being a little more versatile and being able to tilt angles and attach onto things, but the Ulanzi is overall smaller and I do like the form factor. And for the most part, the legs keep the camera upright. Now, I know some of you are going to mention the Mark II. This is a newer camera and it does have a wider focal length with slight upgrades from the original but honestly, if we were to look at the overall scope of things, I personally think that the original ZV-1 packs a great punch for its price, plus features, especially in the used market. As for why I did not mention the ZV-1F, it's just due to its fixed focal length and it's more so marketed as a pure vlogging camera, rather than its much more versatile cousin, the ZV-1. Overall, I think this is a great choice for those who happen to be in the same situation as me. And even then, on a family outing, I could hand this to any of my family members that don't know cameras at all, or even a stranger, in the auto modes and get a higher quality photo than what I'd get on my phone. And that's what I want. Setting up my shots with this camera is far more convenient then using my mirrorless and having to get a tripod and set up for proper exposure. It's just a lot of things that you have to handle and you could avoid all that just by using a smaller camera while maintaining quality. And much of the travel footage you've seen throughout the video, honestly, I just set the ZV-1 on shutter priority. All I do is set up the shutter for my desired frame rate and hit record and that allows me to quickly go back to my girlfriend and enjoy more time together. And that is the goal with this camera. And being in a crunch in traveling, I couldn't imagine a more perfect setup, especially being a point and shoot, compact, small. I can't stop talking about the compact sizes. <laughs> We're keeping that in there. So yeah. That is why I think there's absolutely no excuse on why you shouldn't bring this camera with you when it comes to traveling. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope y'all enjoyed today's video. If you did, please leave me a thumbs up. And to any of you that are new here, I welcome you to the channel and I hope you continue to follow my creative journey. Oh, and one last thing that I really want to say before y'all leave. Honestly, whatever it is that gets you out there to shoot, just use that instead. Because in reality, that's all that really matters. I'll see y'all next time. Peace.